So diff logic groupoids and their Lie algebraids. So I'm going to, at the very least, have to explain the words. Uh, it's very easy to be to say what a diff logic groupoid is. So that's simply in the most basic definition. It's a groupoid in internal to the category. Just to note this by fancy D, F, L, G, diffeological spaces. Um, so that's that's a quick definition, but it's not good enough to do geometry. And that's what I want to explain. You need additional properties um, from your group point to have a nice, uh, you know, like to have a nicely algebraic. Okay, so what's a diffeological space? So the fancy definition is the following. Diffeological space is a concrete, Chief on the side of open subsets of Rns um, and that's that's a good definition to establish the general categoric properties. Um, there's a more hands-on definition um, and this is, that it's a set, if you spell out what this means, it's a set with set X with uh, a distinguished class of maps from such open subsets um, called plots. And they define a sheaf on you, uh, on 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 these open subsets. On the, I call them Euclidean spaces. Okay, so the intuition here uh, is the following: the, the plots are smooth families. You should think of them as defining what smooth means in your category. Smooth families parameterized by real parameters in X. Or you could also think of them as generalized charts where now they don't have to be a local diffeomorphism or anything, but you no, know, they it's in many cases that's that's a good intuition. Well, so the category is a nice category, let's say convenient, convenient category. It's a quasi topos that means something to you. Um, so many uh, categorical constructions exist in that category. But as always with these things, as if it's too convenient, that's too good to be true for geometry. So it's too general uh, to do geometry. Um, so it contains lots of things. So it contains uh, the category of sets in, in several ways, um, topological spaces. Um, then of course, what we really think of perhaps manifolds, um, but also function spaces. Um, and in that category are quotients Quotients exist, or subspaces or subsets um, have a uh, inherited in a diffeologic structure. You have all limits, co limits, and so on and so on. And clearly, uh, there can't be um, there can't be any good geometric results for such a vast class of objects. So the upshot is there are no Strong geometric result. It's more an ambient category that's nice to place everything into. 
and then you go from there. So the task when working with topological spaces is typically um, that you have to identify additional properties um, to, to get uh, that you need for the for your purpose. Okay? So things you want to require of your spaces to do what you want to do with them. Um, and depending on the purpose you have in mind, this may be very different. So what's my purpose? So I got into this from uh, classical field theory. I want to treat um, spaces of field sections of fiber bundles and their symmetries. So big groups like diffeomorphism groups or group points. So in the, the project with um, Marco Fernandez on general relativity that appeared and we made put this to good use and dealt with diffeologic group points there in there, but in a rather ad hoc way. Uh, another thing um, that this seems to be um, where diffeological structures seem to be very good is for deformation theory, because that's what you when you do deformations, that's what you have. You have smooth paths of families of, of things. And um, one of the, say, long-term goals is to, in, in some, some version incarnation of the conservative Steuermann program, to have, um, you know, describe big moduli spaces of structures as diffeologic group points, or higher diffeologic group points, and construct the deformation theory of them by literally um, differentiating them and constructing the tangent objects at a point geometrically. And with a, with a PhD student of mine, um, Laurie Kadian, we're making good progress there. Okay, so to do all that, what I want to do, and perhaps you, that's something you also have on your wish list. Um, here's the question I want to ask about these diffeological spaces. Um, that make them suitable to do Lie theory in them is on which, so my question is the following, on which, sorry, sorry, uh, diffeological spaces, can we do differential geometry? And what, I'm, what I mean by this infinitesimal differential geometry, I'm not certainly gonna talk about integration here. Um, do we have a Cartan calculus? The natural Cartan calculus. So, sorry. So, tangent object of a space, some kind of bundle vector fields um, Lie brackets of vector fields um, forms inner derivatives. Um, and a differential satisfying the usual relations. So they generate some graded Lie, Lie algebra. And uh, well, so now you turn to the literature and see what people have come up with. And so the good news is, so the Durham complex, that's very straightforward and canonical. Everybody agrees on what this is. So a, a form um, and a diffeological space is a family of forms on all plots, compatible with the uh, morphism between the plots. Okay? So this is like in, so it's completely analogous to what, what you would do in different geometry on, on an, the charts of an atlas. So the bad news is, um, so this is, this is uh, easy. Sorry, straightforward. So the bad news is this thing Tx, the tangent thing, the tangent object, tangent diffeological space, tangent bundle, there's a whole zoo of them. Of inequivalent definitions. And moreover, Whatever people do is they don't do what we want them to do. They don't give you Lie brackets, for example. Uh, 
or in, in a derivative, I mean, we, we do have a, a, a drum complex that's canonical. So we'd like to be able to insert vector fields into the forms, um, but this generally does not exist. Okay. And the situation that it's just really, really, I would say messy, uh, well, it's very complicated anyway. So um, then you're about to give up and then Corona came and I was locked in my home office with that question for longer time than I would have thought. And uh, could do some more digging. And after a while I realized that the thing you want to have on diffeologic spaces is already defined in, in, in rather great generality. This I didn't know before, perhaps some of you do. Uh, and it's by Rositsky in 1984, he defined an abstract tension functor uh, encoding the most important properties of, of the tension functor uh, of manifolds or open subsets of Rn. So, so what is an abstract tension functor? So, well, it's a functor on some category C, okay? So it's some endo functor takes an object to another object in the category um, together with a bunch of natural transformations. So let me list them for you, okay? So first, um, this tangent object is supposed to be some kind of bundle where bundle at this first means uh, not much more than there is a map, okay? From Tx to x, so natural transformation. I won't write out the subscripts here, x, x every time. So what's the what's the structure on the fibers? It's supposed to be an abelian, supposed to be abelian groups. Um, and then smoothly along the fibers, so it's an abelian group internal to the category of objects over X. So we have an addition. So now that lives on the fiber product. And we have a zero object. And then, uh, well, we have an inverse. Some people define without that. At any rate, inverse is a, is a property, not a structure. And uh, the third thing is we have a symmetric structure. Uh, on T squared. So this corresponds to if you view as you know tangent vectors given by paths and then tangent vectors of tangent vectors given by paths of paths by exchanging the order of differentiation. Um, and third, the third part is the third, um, sorry, the last structure you want to have is a vertical lift. So if you have yet an element a tension vector then gives rise to a path in the fiber, a linear path, and that gives rise to tangent vector in the tension bundle of the tangent bundle in the vertical part. So you have some, it's called lambda for lift. Okay, so this is the guys you have. And then of course you need a whole bunch of compatibility axioms. And now, of course, the interesting thing here is, and that's how you can see where you, where you, whether you nailed it or not, is the interesting question is, what do you not want to require of your, of your um, structure that perhaps is true for RNs, but shouldn't be true in general? Anyway, so um, let me give you a quick, I'm just gonna, there's so many relations that I'm just gonna give you, a, like, I'm just gonna flash this by you in a second, okay? So here's the full definition. I have already condensed it a bit. Um, 
so you have a tensor struct structure, you have all these, these morphisms, you have fiber products, they commute, the fiber products commute with the tangent function itself. Then you have this B and group structure, you know the, um, you know the commutative diagrams for that one. You have the symmetric structure that's spelled out in the original definition. I, I take it, you know what, what the braid group relations is and then T squared has to be the identity. So that, that's another two or three, um, two, I guess, uh, two diagrams. Um, then you have the compatibility of the symmetric structure with, um, with the tension functor. Then the, the vertical lift has to satisfy some properties uh, and then that's a particularly tricky one. The vertical lift has to be a kernel. So this means that you can actually identify the, the tangent um, space of the tangent fiber with the vertical tangent space, which is not given. And then you have compatibility between the vertical lift and the symmetric structure. So if you count, it's like a dozen or so diagrams. So lots of structure here. So this looks like a pretty daunting task to have this carry over to topological spaces. So we need, certainly need a good idea. So once you have this, you have to check whether this is, gives you what you want. Okay. So one good question is, does it give you a leap bracket, for example? Um, by the way, one of the things that's not part of the definition is that you have a scalar multiplication by the real numbers because um, this only makes sense if real, the real numbers are some kind of object in your category. And um, they're interesting examples, but it's not the case for us. We would get this for free. Okay, so don't worry about this. I'm saying a B in, uh, a B in group bundles here, but we will get vector space. Let's say bundles of vector spaces. It's not really vector bundles. Okay. Okay. So let's let's let me tell you what the um, what, how you get the leap bracket with that structure. And that's quite interesting because you need literally every of the natural transformations you have, and it's actually much more complicated than you might think it is. Since now you have to do everything in terms of diagrams and, and these maps and natural transformations. So here's how, do, how you get the leap bracket. Okay. Um, so you start, let's, let's say you have two sections of your bundle which is just a map, subjective map from Tx to x to begin with. Um, so V and W. So let me walk you through this, okay? So you, you start here. And since you have two vector fields, you first take the diagonal map, you get two times the same point. Then you apply V and W and you get the elements in the tangent space. Okay, then you apply uh, the tangent maps of W and V, so in the other order here, and you get something in T squared of X cross T squared of X. This doesn't live in the fiber bundle yet. You can't add this yet. For this, you need to apply this symmetric structure on one of the elements. Only then do you get something that descends or that factors through the fiber bundle here, T squared X over TX, T squared X, um, on which you can then add things that are diff or subtract to get a, some kind of commutator of your structures. So well, we apply the, the, the minus transformation to one of them, and then we can finally add. Here we have the addition, that's one of the structures we're given. Okay, so, so now we end up in T squared of X. That's not a vector field yet. So how do we get a vector field? Okay, now we check that, um, what we, what we are getting is in the vertical part of the second tangent bundle. Okay, so it means, so here is, this is the vertical part. So this is what projects down. Uh, that's the tangent map of the projection. So here it's, it's the zero. I'm curious, sorry, I forgot to write that. And so it means it factors through this. Okay? So now comes this addition property that um, the vertical part is that this one diagram is a pullback which means that we can now identify the vertical part as we used to from, from manifolds with the, the fiber product of two times Tx. So one is the base point, the other one is the vertical tangent vector. And now we can project onto the value of the interesting part of the bracket. And only then do we get finally this map here. So, so you see you need everything to get this, okay? Um, so now the question, of course, is, is this any 
This is the Lee bracket, and that has some history. Um, so here's the theorem. So this satisfies Jacobi. And this is a result from 2015, and it's pretty complicated and takes this input as the authors write. Um, it took as input some 70, 80 handwritten notes in check from, <laughs> from Rosicki that he had somewhere in his drawer, um, but used some stronger assumptions. So it, this is pretty complicated. Well, you can guess that if you have to follow um, everything through with all these transformations, that's some work. Okay, it, it is a Lee bracket. Peter. Yes. Can I ask you something? Uh, of course. First, a silly question. When you do this for an actual manifold and the tension is structure, you get the, the usual bracket of vector fields, I guess. Yes. That right? Yes, that's right. Okay. And then the, the other one is, uh, I was wondering, what once you have this uh, tension category, you're describing if you make if you can make sense of vector bundles in general like using the, the the vertical lift and looking for objects which identify with somehow the terminal i mean with the vertical lift uh, do you know if is it possible yes. to make that's not here? that's for example that's not true you can now you have a notion of i i'd rather call it bundle of vector spaces means it's a vector space object in the category over the base of objects of the base. Um, it's pretty restrictive to require local triviality. We don't want this, we, we, we will drop this um, that, and it's not necessary. But even if you have that as a definition with or without triviality, it's not true that you can identify the vertical um, uh, vector space uh, ten, sort of, you can identify the tension space with its own vertical tension space. Um, or put differently, if you just take a um, diffeological vector space, it's not true that the tension space at the point is isomorphic to the space itself. And that's um, here's an easy example. Okay. Um, you take Rn, where the plots are CK maps. Now you differentiate, you get CK minus one maps. The map that, ident that you can, as a set, you can still identify the vector space, uh, the tangent space at the point with the vector space itself, but the diffeology will change. So it's not an isomorphism. And this kind of phenomena can, can appear. Or even worse, if you take um, let's say topological manifold, topological space, the tangent fibers uh, would be zero. Okay. Um, if you take a topological vector space, its tangent space the fibers would be zero just because every, in a, in a, uh, if you just require the maps to be continuous, every two paths that go through the same point will represent the same tangent vector. Okay, anyway, so just, uh, I hope this answers your question. So. Um, so you have to kind of learn what you lose and you, you lose quite a bit and then you have to make sure that you can still do what you want to do. There's some more structure that's still there that you may know, well, some of it I think is somewhat unappreciated. Like T, for example, is a monad um, for manifolds. This was studied in the thesis by Juba, it's algebras and with Alan Weinstein. Um, it's uh, algebras as some interesting class of foliations. T squared is still a double bundle, now generally of abelian groups. Or, for example, the, the sort of the collection of powers of the tangent um, functor has a co-simplicial structure. This is, I don't know this, if this is known, this is perhaps a bit, this is at least underappreciated. I will come back to this uh, when I talk, hopefully, I have enough time to talk a bit about higher group points at the end. Okay. Okay, so now back to that's, that was in sort of a general tangent structure. Now back to diffeological spaces. Okay, so um, 
So how do we make sure that you don't have to like implement somehow as properties or requirements all these commutative diagrams? You want to have some machinery that carries over most of the structure we have from Euclidean spaces on which diffeological spaces are sheaves to the sheaves on them. Okay. So here's the obvious choice. Um, so we define the tangent bundle to be, so we take this analogy of charts by gluing what happens on the plots, gluing that together as by co-limit. So where the T of U is the usual uh, tangent object in, in Euclidean spaces. So this is simply the left uh, can extension along the UNEDA embedding of the tangent, the usual tangent functor, followed by, oops, don't need this, followed by uh, the inclusion into um, to this nice category, and then applied to x. So this is a this is the co-limit of the plots. Okay, so what what we do is so that's going to be the machinery. So if Euclidean space has some functor on it here, it's the tangent functor. So then we want to can extend to diffeological spaces. Uh, so for that, we compose it with, we place it on the target also in this nice category, and then we can take, uh, we can take the can extension of this. Sorry. Okay, so this is what's going on. This we can do for all functors. Okay, so now, um, how about um, uh, Christian? Yes. Can you give a more concrete description of this um, co-limit? Yes. So the question is, how do you compute this? Of course. So here's how you do it. So um, the forgetful functor from a diffeological space to its underlying set um, has both a left and right um, adjoint. It means that it preserves limits and co-limits. And this means that the, um, the co-limit, um, the underlying set of the co-limit is the co-limit of the sets. So now you need to first, first step is you compute the co-limit in sets. And this you can do with the usual formulas. So you take 